three kinds of bees nest. These are worker bees. They are females who take care of the nest and collect food from flowers. Through a microscope, we will look at a worker bee. The sting is at the tip of the abdomen. They have combs on the legs. Bees have compound eyes made up of many facets, each a little eye in itself. These drones have no stings. They are males and do no work except to mate with the queen. The large bee in the center is the queen. When she finds food in a mouth, she sticks in her tongue and eats. The workers also keep the queen clean. They bathe and comb her. Her only task is to lay eggs. But first, the workers clean out the cells. They lick the cells with their tongues. The queen, the one moving her body, is about to lay an egg. In section view, we see her depositing the egg. The egg is glued to the bottom of the cell. After three days, the eggs hatch into larvae. Workers, acting as nurses, feed them. These larvae are three days old. Until now, they have been fed royal jelly from glands in the mouth of a worker. This worker is opening a honey cell of stored honey to feed the larvae. Workers also make stored pollen into food for the larvae. After the third day, these foods are given to larvae which will develop into workers or drones. Notice how a worker deposits food for this four-day-old larvae. After six days, the larva spins a cocoon. Inside this cocoon, it will change into a full-grown bee. First, the larva sheds its skin and changes into a pupa, as we see here with the action speeded up. The larvae stay in the cocoon for 12 days and develop into adult bees. Then, each bee starts to gnaw its way out of the cocoon and the cell. The head comes out first. It takes a little time and requires some effort. Then at last, the bee emerges and is ready to do its work in the nest. The first task of the young workers is to feed the larvae in the nest. As they grow older, the workers ventilate the nest by fanning with their wings. Later, they become guards of the nest. A bumblebee accidentally enters. The guards sense that it is a stranger. The bees attack the intruder and sting it to death. But they also die as they try to remove their stings from the body of the victim. Other guards drag the dead bumblebee to the entrance and push it out. In the summertime, when the nest becomes full of eggs and larvae, the workers get ready to raise a new queen. They select a female larva, which they will rear to become a queen. They tear apart her cell and enlarge it. Queens are bigger than workers or drones and need larger cells. The workers feed the queen larva royal jelly only. Other bee larvae receive pollen and honey after the third day. The queen larva grows very quickly. After five and a half days, the workers seal up the queen cell. Inside her cell, the queen larva is immersed in royal jelly. She will change from a grub to a pupa and finally into an adult queen. In the meantime, the old queen and the field bees prepare to leave the nest. Hide the cap over her cell and emerges as a full-grown queen.
The new queen has found another queen cell in the nest. She tears the cell apart. This queen larva will die. Here is another adult queen bee just hatching from its cell. The two queens meet and fight a life and death struggle. The one queen stings her rival to death. But the victor does not die because her sting can be removed from her victim. The workers watch the battle. The field bees, which left the nest with the old queen, settle temporarily on a branch. The nest bees stay with the new queen. Scout bees leave the swarm and look for a place to build a new nest. When the scouts have found a suitable place for a nest, the thousands of bees in the swarm follow them to it. The swarm makes a bee line toward its new home. After the swarm settles, the workers start to build a new comb. These bees are making wax. The wax is secreted by scales on the underside of the abdomen and is scraped off with the sharp hind legs. The worker then takes the wax into her mouth and chews it until it is soft. Many bees working together scoop out the wax dabs and shape them into cells. Watch the bee at the left. These workers are gathering food for the new nest. At the same time, they cross-pollinate the flowers, thereby helping them to produce seeds. Through a magnifying glass, we see a worker gathering food. This is where the bees get the nectar. These are the anthers which contain the pollen. A worker sips nectar from the blossom with its long sucking mouth and stores it in her body in a honey sack. When the bee returns to the nest, she circles around the cells. This is called the honey dance. Then she brings up the nectar from the honey sack into her mouth. There it is mixed with secretions which change it into honey. She deposits the mixture in a honey cell. When bees visit flowers, they get the powder-like pollen on the hairs of the body. With the combs on its legs, the bee brushes the pollen from its body into the pollen basket on each hind leg. The bee actually packs the pollen into these sacs until they bulge. Flight is a little difficult with such a heavy load. The bee carries the pollen to the nest in these baskets. Back in the nest, the worker dances around doing a pollen jig before she deposits the pollen. She pries off the pollen pellets and packs them tightly into a pollen cell. The bees use pollen to make bees bread. Extra food is stored here in the comb for the bees that will live through the cold winter season. Throughout the year, worker bees are busy caring for their house of wax. Bees perform two important services. They help to cross-pollinate many kinds of flowers, and they give us honey, which through the ages has been an important food of man.